this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love. And I'm going to tell you, all hell is breaking loose all over the place, isn't it? We're in the last days. People have been under demonic attack. People have been at odds at their wit's end, not knowing what the heck is going on. But I want to share with you, no matter what, we have to keep our spirits right. We have to keep our motives right. Because mm -hmm. when people don't see the motive, no matter what they believe or don't believe, God knows the heart. He knows. Right or wrong, He knows. Even if you don't know what's in your heart, God does. So, I caution all of us to be very careful not to allow our flesh to rise up in an area that catches us on our blind side. Because that can happen as well. Either way, right or wrong. Even if the motive is right, they always say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So we must be very, very careful in these last days. And we must know in the middle of all this, Jesus can appear up in the sky and pop us right up if we make it or leave us flat on our face on the ground if we don't. And just as a quick heads up on that, when I ask the Lord, I'm going to say this a lot lately, so get used to me repeating this because I'm, I'm trying to make sure as many people hear this as possible. That 15, one, the letter one, I mean the number one, the number five, 15, not 50, 15% 15 of the saints, if God busted through the clouds right now, would, would be the only number that would make it. Only 15%. The other 85% would be left behind after the rapture. So we must really, really, really watch our hearts watch our thoughts, our motives. We have to be careful because Satan has, he's very slyly, he's very wily. He, he's sly, slick, and wicked. He can come in and paint a beautiful picture of you as you look in the mirror at yourself. And while you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you think, oh, wow, don't I look good? Haven't I been doing well with the Lord? Oh, I'm walking the straight and narrow. I know God is pleased with me. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Tain't necessarily so. You might be pleased with you. But God, on the other hand, might want to have a serious powwow with you. But you're not listening because you really don't want to hear it. See, we have to be careful about that. So moving into the message, we're going to read 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. 1 Peter chapter 2. Isn't this necklace pretty? Yeah, Lynn got it for me for my birthday anyway. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just happened to notice it's sparkling and I just love sparkle. Anyway, 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, let's see. Um, we are going to start. All right. At the beginning. Why not? Starting at verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Did you hear what it said? Desire the sincere milk of the word. How many of us never read the word? How many of us never, never read it, never listen to it, never watch it on YouTube? We don't get it in our spirits. Then we wonder, what's up? What's up, buttercup? Well, a little bit of malnutrition going on in the spirit realm. That's what happens when you ignore it. So moving into 
the next verse, verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a cornerstone, that's Jesus, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now are a people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dear, dearly beloved, I beseech you, as, whew, I got to read that again. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now, let me stop there for a second. One of the things we think of when we think about fleshly lust is hot, being hot and bothered. Mm, Got to get me a piece of tail. Ooh, he show is fine. Ooh, she show is hot. Well, you know what? That's not all there is to fleshly lust. Fleshly lust happens to involve things like feeding the pride, feeding that haughtiness, thinking that I'm all that in a bag of chips, can't touch this. And you go through life having somewhat to say about what's wrong with you and you and him and her and them and it. But we don't see what's wrong with ourselves. It's like the Fonz. Remember, I forgot the name of the program. It was a, a, a comedy series, a family program. And the Fonz, it always would start out with him walking in front of the mirror and looking at himself and he gets his comb out to fix his hair and he looks and he says like he's all that he don't need no fixing and he puts the comb back in his pocket and struts on feeling big and bad and bodacious so a lot of times that's the way we are in the body of christ there are a lot of conflicts that happen one doesn't agree with that and that one doesn't agree with you and and your and your tactics don't fit in with with this one and then you are uh, some of you you travel far to do your ministry some of you you go to a job and your you, some of your ministry is is on site at your job but you're trying to handle your business you're trying to do the work you're there to do but somebody with an attitude doesn't want to be bothered with you they don't like the way you told them how to do this that or the other Somebody else with an attitude thinks you don't like them. So now they treat you funny and they start spreading a bunch of rumors about you. Listen, all of that boils down to one thing. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, wickedness, you see, we're so busy focused on each other. And we forget that when we give in to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh will cause you to cuss somebody out. The lust of the flesh will cause you to raise your fists. The lust of the flesh will cause you to throw your hands up, march off the job and say, take this job and stick it. The lust of the flesh will cause you to have a fat attitude before finding out all the facts. So we have to watch how we respond to life, how we behave in life. We have to watch our walk, our talk, our attitude, how we respond. We have to walk, I mean, we have to watch how we receive, how we filter in the signals we're getting. Are we 
hearing what Peter said through our own insecurities? Are we hearing what Lynn said through our own guilt? Hmm. So we think she's um, um, blaming us for something? We think that she is accusing us when it's not her? It's our own conscience beating us up? Because we know somewhere we were wrong. So we have to point the finger out there so that we feel better about ourselves. Do you see what I mean? So we have to be careful about that. And that is what Satan uses to cause friction. That is what Satan uses to cause hurt feelings. You know how they say black on black crime? Well, this is body on body crime. This is believer on believer crime. The people of God at odds with each other. Hmm. As James chapter 3 says, out of one side, we bless God. And out of the same mouth, we curse man. My brethren, this ought not so to be. So we have to watch and pray, pray, pray. Because some of y'all ain't praying. You're gossiping. Some of y'all aren't seeking God and listening for God. You're listening for advice from your friends and your buddies. Or you're listening to your own and leaning to your own understanding, which is what? Ergo, so is your response and reaction. See, we have to remember these are the last days. Satan is pulling out all stops. It's called divide and conquer. It's called discourage and, 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 and bring a person to their knees, not in prayer, but bring a person, make them buckle at the knee and just decide it's too much, I give up. That's the strategy to make you give up. He is trying to wear out the saints. And some of you are allowing it rather than taking the authority that Jesus gave you. I rebuke that spirit of anger in the name of Jesus. The Bible says to forsake wrath. I forsake wrath and I will not allow it to lodge itself into my heart. I rebuke that attitude in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that emotion in the name of Jesus. You will not make me hate my brother. In Jesus' name. You will not make me hate my sister. In the name of Jesus. I love them no matter what. We are one and we are united. You will not make me walk away from this ministry. Because somebody hurt my feelings. In the name of Jesus. You will not make me be weary in well doing. Why? In due season I will reap. If I faint not. And I believe that more than I believe what I'm feeling right now. I believe that more than I believe that he say, she say going on in the grapevine right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? And let me tell you this. Whatever you commit to the Lord. If you made a commitment, baby, pay that vow. Don't commit and don't pay. And I ain't just talking about money. I'm talking about commitment. That's what's wrong with a lot of our marriages nowadays. People are too quick to bail out as soon as they smell something in the air. They're ready to turn tail and run. But they said a vow before the Lord. Mm. Right. Ain't that something? Well, here's the problem with us in the body of Christ. We make promises we don't keep. Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that through hook or crook by the grace of God. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to bow. I'm not. No, baby. Every time you turn around, that's just what you're doing. First sign of trouble. Exit. Stage left. Just like Sylvester in the cartoon. We break covenant with God left and right. 
but we want him to keep his promises with us. Uh, <laughs> don't get it twisted, y'all. He owes us nothing. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. He doesn't owe me a thing. I owe it to him. And so do you. And we owe it to each other, y'all. So my, my exhortation to some of you who are under it, don't bow, don't retreat, don't throw up the white flag and say, I'm, I'm done, I'm out. Stop the world, I want to get off. No. Know that Satan is going to come against the very plans that God has made. And some of you, like some of you in our group right now, are right in the middle of being in ministry. You're obeying God. You got projects going on. You're working with other people in ministry. You're doing all kind of exploit or exploits for the Lord. And then something goes wrong. Or somebody comes at you out the corner of their neck. And you're like, what's your problem? Well, at that point, you got to stop. Put on the brakes, step away from the problem, walk over to the side somewhere, get along with God, and ask God to handle you before you try to handle that. Because if you try to handle that before you start praying, it could blow up in your face. If you handle that according to the way you want to handle it, it could blow up in your face. And then God's got to come in and clean up your mess. Thank God for his mercy. So we have to remember that when we are up against it or people are up against us or we have attitudes with people or there's friction in the household or there are arguments breaking out in the kitchen or somebody gets mad at you for something you didn't even do and there's nothing you can say to convince them otherwise then guess what? It's prayer time. It's prayer time. But remember this, all of this that happens in our lives, those are character builders. Char everything you have to trip over is part of a building block in your growth process, in your character, in your levels of holiness, righteousness, wisdom, insight, understanding, love, 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 mercy, 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 patience, patience, patience. Because God is trying to make spiritual giants out of you and me. So the one thing we cannot allow is Satan to create enemies within the body of Christ. There should never be any schisms in the body of Christ, never. Whatever you do, seek God before you seek your own understanding. Don't give in to the lust of the flesh. Don't give in to the desires of your own will. Don't give in to that. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there is a fool lodged in every one of our hearts. And if we're not careful, that fool will break loose at a weak moment and will demolish everything God wants you to do. So you be careful not to jump the gun. You be careful not to take things so personally. You hear me? Number one, you ain't all that important. Number two, get over you. I didn't mean to rhyme like that. It just happened. But the bottom line is God wants to show us things. He wants to open our eyes to <clears throat> what's happening in us, what's happening around us, and the possibilities that lie ahead. And he wants us to focus on him because he can make a way where there is no way. Hmm. He made a road in the wilderness. He parted the Red Sea. He put water out of a rock. Hello. Knowing that God can do all that, sometimes you got to sit your happy hips down and wait on God based on Psalms 46. 
And I'm going to read Psalms 46. And I hope you listen carefully. Because Psalms 46 is a blessing. And it will help us get things in the right perspective. All right, Psalms 46. And this is it right here. Ah, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river. The streams where the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. God shall she shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early, the heathen raged. Mm. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So for some of you who are getting ready to travel and you got some projects you got to handle, if things break out on the right and things break out on the left, before you do anything, be still and say, Lord, where is this leading? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? How do you want me to handle him? How do you want me to handle her? What do I do? Give me wisdom. Show me, Lord. Keep me in perfect peace because I'm keeping my mind stayed on you. Don't let me jump the gun. Solve the issue your way so that I won't mess it up my way in the name of Jesus. You may have uh, uh, an, electric, an electrical issue. May have, you may have a plumbing issue. You may have something and there's nobody around to do anything about it. God knows how to send somebody right across your lawn. Right at the time saying, can you tell me how to get here or how to get there? And guess who that will be? The plumber or the electrician God has to solve your problem right on the dime. And they'll be spirit filled. And when you ask them questions, they'll say, oh, I could do that for you. I got time. And then when they get ready to do it, they'll say, oh, by the way, the Lord just told me to do it for free. I'm telling you, God can work miracles. So things break out all the time, y'all, because Satan is busy. He's always stirring the pot. We cannot afford to panic. Why? Panic kills. Be very careful with that. Be still. Line yourself up with God. Ask him right at the moment of crisis. Give me the mind of Christ, the heart of God. Give me the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Help me to be still and see which direction you lead me to. Here's a quick example. One time I was, I had just left the shop. And, and as soon as I was headed halfway home, I get a call. Pat. The pipes have stopped up. I'm in the middle of a chemical process and we can't and, and the water won't go down the sinks. We can't use the sinks. I got a double back and I'm saying, Lord, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? I need your help now. I mean, I actually yelled it. And as soon as I said, I need your help now, Ray Pfeiffer popped in my head. And who is Ray Pfeiffer, you ask? He was my next door neighbor. You know, his mother was my mentor, my spiritual mentor. And I said, Ray, he, everybody says they can never catch him. But I, I did. I didn't try to reach him. I reached his mother. And I said, can you call Ray? I'm in an emergency. 
Ray happened to be right there in his mother's house. He grabbed the phone. He said, I'll be right up. He went, stopped at a, uh, at a, uh, a hardware on the way and bought a little 15 foot snake. He said, I, I know I can take it back if it's the wrong size, but I figured that would save time on my way. He gets up there. He, he finds out the, the opening to that pipe is right outside the building. And all he had to do was unscrew it with his hand, big old nut, and he unscrews it and he pulls it out and then he sticks the snake in there manually and, and, and works it in and pulls out a, a, a five foot string of hair. Problem solved within 15 minutes. The chemical work, thank God, still had five minutes to go before it had to be rinsed out. Did God come through? Yes. Did the, the people in the salon holler at me? Did I holler at them? Did I said, I just got home. No, I didn't do any of that. I called on the Lord. See, if you stay focused on God, no matter what, ugly thing rears its ugly head. The solution will come 10 times faster and easier when you're leaning on God through the whole thing. When you put your thoughts, your presumptions, your attitudes, your emotions, your reactions in God's hands. And you let him tell you what to do. Don't you decide what you're going to do. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't go there, baby. Please don't. No, your name is not J-E-S-U-S. -S. God is the one with all the answers and all the wisdom and the timing and the power and the authority and the miracle working power. Anyway, I'm closing with that. Remember who your God is when you're going through. Remember who your God is when you're at odds with this one, that one, or the other one. Remember what God, who God is when you are going through or facing an instant crisis. With God, there's no room for panic. Panic should never be in your vocabulary. Why? Because panic involves fear. And fear is not of God. Fear is of the devil. Fear has torment. God is love. And perfect love casts out fear. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Be blessed. Don't be stressed. In Jesus' name. Oh.